Hey, what's up, YouTube? Signier here, and I just have a little overview. I was able to attend a Pro Tour qualifier for Born of the Gods this weekend, so I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. Also, I'm going to give you the deck tech of the deck that I use, which I actually put together like the night before because my other deck wasn't working too well. So, so the PTQ was in Madison, Wisconsin. There were 241 players, which was the biggest event that I've ever been to so far. Because in March, I'm scheduled to go to a GP, which I'm really excited for. But So this was a little bit of taste of a big tournament, so it was fun. So, And I played Esper Humans, so I'll just put that out there right away. So round one... I played against a White Weenie deck. It was a fairly easy matchup, but it's round one and I was really nervous because who wants to go into a tournament and lose in round one? That's just not a good way to start start off a tournament. So I was making sure I had all my, my plays right and stuff. I did start off with, um, I missed a Battalion Trigger. It was sort of funny because in my head, I had eight damage, but like he said, no, it's six. You didn't announce your trigger, and I'm like, shoot, because in my head I was there, but physically I, I wasn't there. So I did not miss another battalion trigger for the whole day, which was nice. So so I won two and zero oh against Mono White Weenie. Round two. I played Mono Black, which I haven't tested against before, but in my opinion, it's my most comfortable matchup. Cause I think it's because I had an answer to Desecration Demon every time. And even if I didn't, I had Zathar Necromancers to stall until I could find an answer. So that was that. I won 2 0. So. I won my first two rounds, and who would have thought that the matches were going to get harder? So round three, I actually lost my first match 0-2. It was against um, America, Red, White, and Blue Burn, which was interesting because it's because I had too many dead cards even after I sideboarded. I just wasn't expecting Burn to be a top deck, so. Also, um, I'm just going to talk about a card that I use, which is really underrated. It's Lavinia of the Tenth. Because I put this deck together last second, I, and I didn't really, uh, couldn't really afford Blood Barons. So, against a Burn deck, this actually, it's really good. Especially when you have Whip of Erebos for Lifelink, it's pretty much just punches burn in the face pretty much so I lost 0-2 no I, I, I lost 1-2 I won a game with Lavinia so that's why I brought her up round 4 which was against Naya midrange I ended up losing that 1-2 and two. I was pretty much just outclassed with my creatures and I didn't have enough removal so it was Straightforward. Round 5 I won, which was against Mono Black again. So, pretty much same as round 2 against the other Mono Black deck that I played. Far and Away was a really good card, because then I could just deal with Pack Rats, more Desecration Demons. Also, Grey Merchant I saw for the... I beat it because, like... She didn't have enough, like, a lot of devotion out there, so it only did, like, two or three, so it wasn't a big deal for me. Also, there was a time where Supreme Verdict was actually good, because she had three creatures on board, and I had two creatures and a Necromancer on board, so I Verdict, cleared the board, got three zombies, and pretty much got there, so... I, I like facing Mono Black. I did not have to face a Mono Blue deck, so I'm wondering how that would have went. Round six, I actually lost 
against the mirror match against another Esper Humans deck. One and two. The only difference was that he had a combo which I really should have had in the deck. Which is with um, Cartel Aristocrat and Soul Ransom. In case you're un unfamiliar with the combo, I'll just go over it once. You have Cartel Aristocrat on the board. And you steal one of their creatures with Soul Ransom. And when they try to discard two to get their creature back, you use your sack outlet to blow up the, the, you sacrifice it to give it, to blow up the creature. I believe they, they discard two, then you get to, to draw two off that. So I think I got that right. If I didn't, let me know because I didn't understand it at first either really. But if I keep going with this deck, I will be sure to include those. And round 7, I lost 0-2 against a Boros aggro deck. He just had like 90% of his deck, of his creatures were Battalion. And I, I just got out aggroed. So, the day was going really slow. So, I dropped out when I was 3 wins and 4 losses. Just only two more rounds so at that point after round seven I was out of my chances of getting any prizes so I just dropped but overall I had fun and um two born of the gar two cards that I would add from born of the gods is um Afara the blue white god and also pain seer cause I think he's a better two drop than like Cards I'll show you like Imposing Sovereign or maybe Precinct Captain. So so now without further ado, I will show you the, the deck that I used. Alrighty, so we are back and I'm going to show you my version of Esper Humans. First for the mana base, we have three Watery Graves. Two Hallowed Fountains as our shock land dosage. We have three Temple of Deceits and one Temple of Silence. I could have went with more temples, but I thought that early game, instead of playing lands tapped, you want to play creatures like Soldier of the Pantheon, Boros Elite, stuff of that nature. So that's why I only included a play set of temples. Next. We have 11 basic planes and three basic swamps. So I probably could have did better if I had like if I had the deck for a while. Uh, I put it like I said I put it together last second. Could have had some godless shrines, stuff of that nature, more fountains. All right, moving on to the creatures. Best one drop in the deck would be Soldier of the Pantheon. He's pro multicolor, so you can pretty much block Naya decks all day, pretty much. So and gain life off stuff. Next, we have three Boros Elites with the Battalion Trigger. Good stuff there. Three Daring Skyjacks. Which, when the battalion triggered, it was really nice. And he's human, so 3 1 flyer with battalion. Good stuff. Two imposing sovereigns. Um, I didn't have too many options for the two drop slots, so. And I don't think, like, there are too many good haste. Well, it shuts down hammer, I know that, but I did not see hammer at all, so. It just pretty much can shut down haste creatures but that's pretty much it and yeah moving on two precincts captains which is really good when he comes unblocked and also really good with Lavinia I'll talk about her a little bit later four sky knights which are really good it's part of the why we splash blue here it's a really good human as 
I really didn't notice this card until the GP in Japan where the where the one dude got really far with the uh, Esper Human Splashing Blue for this and Detention Sphere, so he gets credit for this. Zathur Necromancer, the heart of the deck. Your humans die, you get more. When this, when these die, you get a zombie. So I'm really good card. And one Lavinia at the top of the curve. Pro red. When it enters the battlefield, detain each non-land permanent your opponent's control with convert man cost four or less. It's a four-four. I think this card is really underrated. I'm. It's pretty much just a budget um, blood baron because I didn't really have time to get those. And also, its um, ability most of the time makes your creatures swing through, like, makes them unblockable. So that's a good card. And moving on to non-creature spells. Our removal suite, our instant speed removal, we have two ultimate prices. Really good against Desecration Demon, stuff of that nature, and two Doom Blades. Obviously, had to be sided out against Mono Black. We have two Far and Aways. Really good card, it's really versatile. Bounce creatures when you have to, and sac sacrifice creatures also. Next is three Detention Spheres, which deals with Planeswalkers, um, Gods, Desecration Demons, <laughs> so really good splash for blue there. Two Supreme Verdicts, which people don't see coming from a creature based deck, but with the Zachary Necromancer, you get them by surprise by with a full field, you blow up your creatures, blow up theirs, hopefully you'll get zombies back. Whip of Erebos, lifelink. Solid at the top, top of the curve. I, I like it. And two Immortal Servitudes, which... It was good at times, but it was sort of clunky at, at other times, so... Not, it's sort of a wild card of a so yeah lastly I will show you my sideboard going coming in we have pithing needle in case I needed to deal with muta vault planeswalkers stuff of that nature another far and away um rootborn defenses because Anger of the Gods is annoying because we don't get our zombies because they get exiled. So, in case you need to make them instructable. And you can also populate off the Precinct token. Two Dark Betrayals. So, really easy to side against Mono Black. You take out your Doom Blades, you bring in your Dark Betrayals. Self explanatory there really fun to side work as you know you're gonna get better results um, three sin collectors um, I didn't play control so I didn't have to like bring these in against like verdicts and now I, I mean sphinx's revs but I use this against the burn deck that I face to try to I got it's like card and I'm forgetting the name I think it's War Leaders Helix? I think I think it's War Leaders Helix. It's the they gain four and they deal four and it's two and a white and a red, so that did some work. Glare of Heresy. Good for the mirror. Good against mono white. Gets rid of Elspeth. Good stuff. Another detention sphere in case it's needed. Brave the elements in case we need to clear a path for our, most of our creatures. Profit and loss. I only sided this one, sided in once, and I didn't see it, but 
buffs our creatures and cripples theirs. And this is pretty much just filler. I probably could have had like another pithy needle, but I didn't cite it in it at all, so it just took up the slot of number 15 the sideboard. So that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed my results for my Pro Tour qualifier and my deck tech. So that's all I got. And until next time, have a great day, YouTube.